Okay, Brian Terrell. Uh, we're out. <laughs> we're here in Des Moines. Brian, why, why are you here, and uh, what's going on? Well, we're here. A friend from New York brought an inflatable uh, model drone, a, a full-scale model, the Predator drone. Uh, that, uh, and we're here. This is the uh, uh, an event around the, the the Democrats having around the coming caucuses, and uh, unfortunately, this has been the Democrats' go-to weapon, and. Uh, 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 it was Obama who didn't in, was not invented in the Obama administration, but it was uh, went from an instrument of uh, surveillance to an instrument of death uh, during his tenure. So I'm kind of we're just listening to everybody here shouting out the name of their candidates, and it just seems all so vacuous uh, and empty, all personality centered. And the you know the fact is that there is. Um, uh, there are multiple wars going on. They've been going on for 18 years. There are, we now have uh, soldiers in Afghanistan who were not born yet when this war started. And unlike uh, uh, the election of 1968, where every candidate was talking about the war and everybody in the street was talking about the war and the conventions were disrupted, uh, this war, we've gotten so used to it. It's a part of, just part of the fabric of things, and nobody's noticing us here. You know, it's not part of the, uh, not part of the discussion. So we're here on the street corner, and at strategic times, blowing up the, the, the drone and lifting it up uh, to try to inject some of that reality into this conversation. Uh, uh, this uh, mostly very empty, <laughs> inconsequential conversation about the future of this country. We'll take a horn break here and uh, look at the sign. I'm sure they're honking for the drone, Brian. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, truckers for Yang. Ah, okay. All right. What is Trang for? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. That's uh, a good question. Brian, you've been to Afghanistan many, many times. Yeah, I don't remember, but a bunch of times. A bunch of times. And so you've talked to people, family members of victims of, of the drone warfare. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, my first visit to Afghanistan, I went with my friends to uh, Chari Kumbar, uh, 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 a really horrific uh, refugee camp. People, uh, the city of Kabul, went from a few hundred thousand to now it's like six or seven million. By that time it was five million. And people uh, uh, leaving the countryside and many of them talking about the drones uh, that can attack out of nowhere as a, as, as a reason for them leaving, uh, leaving their homes and you know filling up the city. But uh, I was with my friend Kathy Kelly, who's uh, a few years older than me, and one of those women who's never had kids but is a magnet to children. Children just come to her. And she was sitting on the floor in, in this uh, mud hut with a uh, UN blue canvas uh, cover, plastic canvas cover, awning over it. A uh, very cold winter day. And this little girl was snuggling up against Kathy, and her grandfather was talking about a drone strike. I, I believe they were in the Helmand province that destroyed their house and killed um, the child's mother, her daughter, his daughter. And then he leaned over and pulled this little girl's sleeve up and saw her arm from the elbow down. One arm was gone, and that was from that strike. So I, I think. Having the perspective and, and talking to people who are the victims, um, it is a, uh, it's not abstract and it's not just a neat new technology in which our soldiers get to stay home and sleep in their own houses and uh, wage war on the other side of the earth without any danger to themselves. Uh, you know, that, that has real consequences. I've also, in the last few years, had the opportunity to get to know several of the people who've been operating the drones. And it's um, we're learning something about human beings, about how we're not made to fight. Uh, 
one thing that uh, I have uh, had a great uncle who suffered from shell shock from World War I who I only met at family weddings and events because somebody would go to the hospital and get him and take him to these events and take him back and it was shell shock and the idea was he was in the trench and, and he saw things and heard things and was subjected to, to horrible experiences you know, that, that scarred him but now we have these uh, these young men and women who are sitting in air conditioned comfort working an eight hour shift at a computer just like millions of other Americans are and they're doing it here from Des Moines, and they're doing it from Syracuse, New York, and from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, sitting at a desk, at a computer, moving a mouse. They're flying these machines like this with high-definition video of what's going on on the ground. And unlike fighter pilots who are going at near sonic speed, supersonic speed, they, they don't even see the plume of smoke from their, uh, from their missiles, but the drone pilots watch these 500 pound Hellfire missiles hit their target and blow them up and they see in high definition video the, bo- the bodies disintegrated and uh, it really you know, it brings the war home. One drone operator said when he's operating the drones he's 7,000 miles away from the war, the distance to Afghanistan but really 16 inches away from the war the distance from his face to the screen um, and uh, these people who are in comfort, they can see, but they can't hear. They can't hear the screams. But they, they see what they've done in a, in a way that's much more intimate than many than most soldiers in modern warfare. And, uh, and they are just as scarred. You know, we're hurt not just by the violence. You know, we're, we're, people are vulnerable. People can be hurt by the violence done to us. Uh, but we're also hurt by the violence we do to others. And, and uh, so it's a horrible thing, but I think, we're, I, I think it's, it's teaching us something about people that is just really, really important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.